Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how to repair a, a micro oven. This micro oven is a Samsung oven and it's not switching on even if you connect it to the power. There's nothing happening. So we have to open the micro oven and see what is happening. And remember guys, every time we get an electrical appliance, you have to make sure that it's unplugged. So I will show you some things before we open this micro oven. Okay guys, so this is the model number for the Samsung model ME6194ST. This is the model number for the micro oven. So now I will show you what you need to open to remove all these screws so that you can remove the case, the metal case which is enclosing the components inside the micro oven. So basically guys, in a micro oven there are, I want to show you some main components that we have in the micro oven. We are not recommend. You are not recommended to open a micro oven uh, if you are not authorized or if you don't know what is inside. And because of this thing, it's called a capacitor. So this thing uh, is like a battery. It holds current. So you can see that it's reaching 2,200 watts. So it can contain up to 2,200 watts, which is uh, which is which can kill you, which can electrocute you, can cause damage or even death. So that's why we don't recommend. So. This thing needs to be discharged. I'll show you in another my videos how to discharge a capacitor. But uh, I've seen that most of the new models they have a resistor inside. So if you see a, a capacitor drawn this thing right here, you know that uh, it can it discharge itself because they have put an inbuilt resistor inside a 10 ohm resistor. So okay, guys. So now I will show you what you need to open this thing. You need a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver for this one, and also you need uh, some cable ties and you also need a multimeter so I'll show you how to use this electrical multimeter to diagnose each part so now we have to open and I also have this tongue I use it to remove the lugs to remove cables and stuff we show as we go and I also show you that we, I will also use this razor to, to remove the cable ties inside the uh, oven so now I will remove the metal casing for the metal oven I stated and it's not coming on so now I'll open it and show you what is inside okay guys so we've managed to open the micro oven so now guys if your microwave you don't have power on your microwave ne? one thing you have to follow these steps you need to make sure that you have power on your socket one you can use either a charger you can use a quick jig you can use even an iron to see if you have power that's what you can check or you can even use a multimeter but i i think if you know that you have a working iron you can use the iron to see if you are what if you're getting any power there so if you're getting power you have to look for your cable if, if it is still working fine like this one i think there's no problem you have to test if this wire is working fine now both my socket and the cable are working fine so now i have to suspect this now you can see that this is power in from the main switch from the socket ne? it's coming through here then we have the this is the what you, this is the filter for the micro oven so that the oven will not disturb other circuit so this is the filter now which uh, regulates the flow of current within the microwave and other appliances okay so we have to test the first thing that you have to do you have to test if there is a continuity between uh, this you see this is a uh, this is a fuse it's a 12 amps fuse as you can see there it's a 12 amp fuse this one Okay, now, uh, how do you test it? If you have a multimeter, you need to put your multimeter to continue it. This is continue it or to diode mode. This is diode mode or to continue it represented by this symbol, this one, which is ohms. So now I have to switch on my test meter to ohms or to, to diode mode. As for me, I prefer diode mode. So I, I switch on my tester to diode mode. This is diode mode now. So now, what do I do? I take my probes, which are these ones one and two now i put one here there on the other terminal of a mic of the of the fuse and another one on the this terminal like this now you can see that uh, now you can see now i put my probes on the on the I put my probes on the fuse and you can see that we don't have continuity because it's saying over limit or no connection if you have your one let me show you if there's continuity they shall they must read like this now let me just put them like this okay like this now you see that there is a reading it's reading 0, 0,01 because 
the, 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 the probes are touchy. So it shows there's a reading. Now we don't have a reading, so it shows that the fuse is bent. Now if a fuse is bent, we have to diagnose to see if everything is working fine before we, re we replace the fuse. Okay, make sure when you, repair the, when you replace the fuse, you put at 12 amps. This is the specification for the fuse. It's 250 volts. Oh, sorry guys, it's not focusing. It's 200 fuse, it's 250 and 12 amps. This is the specification for the fuse. So when you are buying, this is the specification for your fuse. You need to make sure that you replace the fuse with the right fuse. Okay, guys. Now, I will have to test the main components of a microwave. Now, I have to show you first which are the main components of a microwave. Okay. So, we have uh, power from this. It moves to the to the to the to this. This is the lower side. When I say lower side, I mean we have 250 volts from this side, from the line, because here in South Africa we have 250 volts from the main line, from the main, all the sockets. So now, through these cables, if you can trace these cables right here, this is our, now the outlet from the from this filter. I said this is a filter circuit now. This is the in from the main socket, from this cable. And now, this is the outlet, which is going to the what? To the micro oven. So now, it is going through here, through this switch mechanism and everything. Now, this is where we have the relays, this is where we have the, the, the PC board and everything. So now, the most important part is the high side. Now, this is the high side. We have to test if the transformer is working alright. This is the transformer, which is a step-up transformer, which increases the amount of voltage that we have from it. It, uh, it, con it, uh, okay, it steps up 250 to 2000 something volts. And now, from this transformer, okay, we have here, everything happens, whatever it is meant for to just switch on and the timer and stuff here within the PC board. Now we have the now we have we have 250 volts through this electrical cable, these two, which is the neutral and the live to the con to the transformer. Then the transformer steps up the current from 250 volts to a higher like 2000 volts. So now we have 2000 volts going one terminal will go straight like this one will go straight to the magnetron which is the the component which produces the microwave it's a wave now we have this capacitor so now guys we have to see if this if our 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 transformer is working all right if it's grounded we have to also check if this uh, magnetron is working all right we have to check if the capacitor is working all right so now today i'll show you the basics of how this thing works and how to test these three main components so i'll go ahead and show you how to test these three components okay guys we are still using the the diode mode or the continuity mode some uh, some tester they have this uh, the beeping whatever but this one does not have which i'm using today so guys i will i will, I will make i will use help from this alligator clip so i'll put my my i'll put one of my terminals which is this one the black one i will, I will use the, the alligator clip and also i will have to now i will this one i will I will use this one like this. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Okay, now, firstly, I, I would like to test the the magnetron itself first, which is this component. That's the magnetron which produces the microwave uh, when it gets high voltage from the transformer and the capacitor. So now, you have to to remove this thing and you make sure that you need to make sure that you put it the exact way it was before or you can even use a picture you can just take a picture you remove everything so that you use your picture as your reference so now i unplug these terminals as for me i know because i can read the diagram because this thing has two terminals the terminals it's f and fa if you can see there that okay this is fa and this one is just f these are the these are the what these are the terminal the the terminal the polarity for the terminals okay guys so now i will have to remove these ones so as you can see that uh, fa is coming from our our capacitor like this this is fa which is connected to fa like this so we have to remove it like this now now i will use this alligator as my negative now i put it here now we should have continue it there if it's working fine now Look, we are having 0 0.3, so it shows that we have continuity. Now, we have also to check if the magnetron is not grounded. How do we test it? We just put one terminal on the other terminal like this, and we put another terminal on the ground like this, the metal casing, like this. 
now you see there's no region so this terminal is not grounded then we shift we change it to another one now how do we shift we just remove this terminal to another terminal like this okay then we test again to the ground we look on our tester now this magnetron is working perfectly fine now we go to the to the capacitor so before we forget we have to put it back to put the terminals for the magnetron back like this okay we we'll put them back as they were before okay thank you so much now we move on to the capacitor for you to test a capacitor nicely how what do you do you have also to you have to remove the terminals because one of the terminal is going to the ground so this is why i say we need the the tongue this one i call it a tongue so we just do like this okay guys sorry before you attempt anything this was supposed to be the first thing when you open a mag a microwave to discharge the capacitor so as for this one i know that this capacitor has got uh like a, a, an inbuilt resistor but first just make sure how do you discharge a capacitor you just use a tongue like this one make sure that it's insulated so that you won't get electrocuted the handles are, ele are insulated in rubber or whatever material which, so that you won't get direct touch so now you just put them across the terminals like this like this across the terminals sorry like this yeah as you can see we've discharged it we would make sure that we don't have any current within the capacitor so now the now i have to we now are going to test the capacitor how do we test it now uh, we have to remove this thing the one terminal like this uh -huh. we've removed it so you see that this is coming from the transformer and inside this casing there is a fuse there is a, a low current fuse inside there so we need to to know so guys i advise you to use pictures just take a picture a snap then you so that you use it as reference when you are taking your things back yeah now we have to remove the what do, this one the other terminal uh -huh. and we have also to remove this one this one is an important uh, is an important component which is a diode this one is the diode which i'm talking about okay i'll show you also how to test a diode okay so now I have uh, removed it and now we are, we are go let's go ahead to test the the capacitor so now we just test using the 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 continuity test so we test across the terminals we must not have any continuity we must have open load like this one the reading should not change should remain one or open load in other tester they have ol in this one they just use one okay so now I've put another terminal you see there's no reading there and you put another now we change now we test if it's grounded we just put it like this like this one now there's nothing happening now we change the terminals to another to the other side like this it's not grounded again so it means this one is working perfectly fine and you move ahead and uh, now we have to test the diode to test the diode we need to check for continuity within the diode so now we put one probe to this side and we as for this setting we must not have any reading on the diode like this no reading on this side okay now i will exchange the terminals like this mm -hmm. like this yeah now you can see that it's it's i think this one is working fine the diode again so now we have to put everything back because before we forget so still i just use my tongue to put back the diode like this and now i'm putting back the okay remember this one it was here to the other side like this so i just use this one and try by all means when you're working with electrical components not to use your direct or your bare hands your naked hands so now i put the remaining one like this okay now everything is fine here to this side so guys what are we gonna do now so i have to take the fuse i have to go and look for a fuse so that i can replace with another fuse okay guys i've decided to go further to test the the diode because now i'm suspecting the diode because my test the way that i tested it i am not satisfied if it's not working or not because that uh, diode module that i put is, this test is too small for this diode so i decided to test to use another method where we can use a charger or a battery so if you can see guys this is a this is an uh, output of dc current direct current of nine volts so i will use this one you can see that 
uh, positive. You can see that the inside, the inside is the positive, this one, and the outside of the terminal, which is this one, is the negative, like this one. So the outside is the negative, the inside is the positive, as shown by the diagram here. So now I will use this charger to see because this diode, the diode is meant to only allow current to flow in one direction, so we don't have reverse. So now I have to plug it in, and I will show you guys. Uh, you have to put our tester on DC mode. So this one is DC mode, which ranges from. 200 millivolts to 1000 so if you put it from anywhere since it's 9 volt we just put it to 20 which is here so it will work fine or 200 is or 1000 it's just the same but don't put it below like this so now i will have to test it without using a diode okay guys so now i'm putting my my positive terminal inside and my negative terminal outside now you can see that it's please guys it's 8 point point something sorry my i'm having uh, a challenge with my test it's not showing any side of this one so this one is eight that one is eight point something okay eight point something so it's less than nine so it's okay so now we know that we have eight point eight point eight let's just say eight point eight which is average so now we use this this diode so this is the diode which was currently in the micro oven this one so we'll put it like this we just okay we'll put it like this We'll put it like this so we see okay you see the positive connected to the positive now i'm taking the negative uh i'm con i was supposed to put it like this when i was testing without a diode ne to just join negative negative since positive joined positive like this and we have our 8.8 .8, like that so now just disconnect the negative a Oh, sorry, guys. I, I saw that you are not seeing anything. Okay, so guys, I was connecting the positive to the inside of the of the terminal, and the outside is the negative like this. So that that's what we are reading. Like that's where we are reading. Now it's reading ten point something. So now it's reading again eight. Okay, guys. So now, now where do I put the diode? I just put the diode like this one even if you don't know the polarity for the diode it doesn't matter just know that it has to allow current flow through in one direction like this okay now you see we have zero zero so we don't have flow in this direction and if we vice versa it like, like this let me exchange the side look now it's like this now we just put it like this now we see we are having 6.7 okay this one causes a voltage drop so now we have a voltage drop of two volts so now we show that this one is working perfectly this one so it means for this one is working perfectly so i know within my chest that there's another one which is within my other desk which i keep there's another one which is defective i think it's this one let me just test it okay we just use the same method let's just put it like this look we have six five point something let's change the side we'll change the side like this then we still have five point something. So this shows that this one is defect. Is it is a direct continuity? It, it is not working. This one, even if I face it like this, it's still not. It's still showing a reading. So it shows that it's damaged. So now, guys, I have to put everything back. The diode back. So now, I will have to take our diode, our working diode, which is this one. It has proven to be working fine. So now we have to put it back where it was. It was connected to this one. So this one is put because a diode allows DC car DC voltage to flow through and blocks AC. So that's what it does here. So guys, I'll just put it back. I'll show you later in a few minutes. Okay, guys. So oh, so okay, guys. So now we have to check the fuses. These are my fuse. These are 15 amp fuse. So there's not too much difference. So now. I have to replace this fuse with this one. It will just work perfectly fine. So now I will replace it. These are the fuse in my space which I keep for any case like this one. Yeah, now I finished replacing the the fuse. So now I go ahead and plug it back and see what is happening. So now everything is working fine. So the cause of the fuse to blow to be blown it might be because this one is used for commercial use this man the owner of the fridge so the owner of the micro oven uses it for for business what he used to eat 
like to home his uh, his food his self food stuffs like his like spatula, sausage, whatever, whatever, a lot of things. So this one is youthful. So it must be just because of an overload or whatever. So we we'll see if it if it goes for more than like five three minutes without the fuse blown. So it will mean that it's working fine. So now let's go ahead and get a cup of water so that we can try to to heat it and see if everything is working fine. Okay, guys. And uh, now I want to give you a warning. So now we are moving on to testing the micro oven. We think everything is working fine. We have replaced the fuse. We have tested each and every important component that we know. So now what are we going to do now? Now we have to to test it. So guys, we have to make sure before you connect it back, you, make to, you need to make sure that all the wires are right where you found them. You need to make sure that everything is in place. Just to cross-check everything, everything. See, as for me, I've cross-checked everything is fine. So now we have to put this cup of water so that I can test the microwave so I'll put it inside like this so now I close it now the most important part is testing so now I'll use I'll remove this charger that we're using now I have to plug it this is it yes we have to, to plug it like this oh so I'm using one hand because the other hand is holding the camera like this oh okay it's fine now you can see that there is a reading over there 12 o'clock so it shows that everything now we're having power there so now we have to just run it for two minutes so okay this is our start okay let me just say two oh no 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 I'm not doing cloak so let me just start Oh Jesus Christ, let me stop it and start again. So now we just need to do it two minutes. Sorry, I have to start it again. Stop. Then we have to run it for two minutes. So I'll press two, like this. Then two, then zero, zero, two minutes. Then start. So now we have to see how it's performing. Now I see that the, the fan is running, but oh. now so guys we tried to I tried sorry to to run the system and it the cable started to, to, to be warm, like this cable is a, it's a 16 amp cable, it started to, to get warm, like ish. So I see the, the transformer now is smoking. Do you remember that we did not test the transformer? So this one we don't have to test it anymore. We were supposed to test everything. Sorry guys, we did not test the transformer. I will show you how to test the transformer. Now this one, it was smoking, so it's automatic and it's 100% sure that the transformer is dead. So now, this is... Uh, the number for the transformer or just use your model number for the microwave which I have shown you earlier which is at the back which is this one this one is the the model number for the so you can use this model number to order your or you can just take this transformer to to your local dealer or whoever who trying to sell this transformer they can find you a perfect match a perfect uh, uh, spare for you. So guys, I have to remove this transformer uh, and I'll show you when I replace everything back. Thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, watch out for more videos. I'll show you how to uh, why, how everything works about this. Not not particularly this one, but how a micro oven works, what this principle, how everything works, each component, how to diagnose each component. I'll show you everything about this thing. So guys, please subscribe to my youtube channel also like share comment i like comments very much so that we can know what do you suggest what should i record or did i made any mistake or what do you want me to improve because i want to improve uh, i believe in continuous improvement so guys thank you so much for your support okay guys so today uh, we have brought this other transformer which i found from another old micro oven so we have to fit it in because that one we've already discarded to the scrap to the scraper so now i have to put it back and everything will be well okay guys so i've finished to install the new transformer 
So now everything is well. I also changed the fuse because uh, the terminal was so different. So I've changed this fuse. I told you last time that inside here we have a fuse. So uh, we had this one. Okay. So this one is the one which was inside. So I've removed it simply because this one have a thicker. Sorry, I changed this one because this is the fuse, the old one. So now I've changed it because it has a thicker lug than this one. So that's why I've changed it. And the diode tested is working fine, and the capacitor too is working fine. So I've removed the transformer. So that day when this fuse was blown, which we replaced. It's because this transformer was drawing too much current simply because it was broken, so it was drawing too much current. So now we've replaced this one with the one which is working fine. So now let's go ahead and test the transfer the microwave to see what is happening. So now we have to put a couple of water. Okay, these are my screws. Okay, so now we have to put a cup of wet water inside there. So a cup of cold water so that we see if the water is warming up. A cup of cold cold water. Okay, so this is our cup of cold water. So put it inside. Then we close the microwave. Let me remove the screws. Mm -hmm. Now we close the microwave. And then after cross-checking if everything is fine, is properly wired, so now I will plug my microwave to the lines. So this is our cable right here, and now this is the, the plug. Ish. I'm having a challenge using one one hand okay so now it is lit on now we just run it mm, let's say two zero zero that's two minutes start yeah everything is running so let's just give it a few just the few, two minutes after two minutes then we'll see if the, we are having any difference warming of water okay so fridge is almost done yeah it's done now we can hear the tone that is it is finished the cycle now we can open it and check all right Ish. I don't know if you can see that the water is fine, the water was boiling fine. So that's all guys, our transformer was the problem. So now, thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And for new, for new ones, please subscribe to my channel for more because there are many which are coming. So you have to switch on your notification so that every new thing that you release you have it. And we have to go deeper about my crop, how they work and everything about them, how they work, their main problems, etc, etc.